Hello everyone. Hello everyone, good evening. Hello everyone, good evening. Yeah. Am I audible to you? Am I audible to you? Yeah. Yes. We'll start the session. Yes. We'll start the session. So, welcome to Venkan English Guru and uh, in the series of our uh, lectures, in the series of our online classes, free online classes on YouTube. Uh, thank you everybody because uh, yesterday we reached 1000 subscribers and it's only because of your support. So thank you all for uh, subscribing to our YouTube channel Venkanna English Guru. For more videos in future, I will also conduct a number of classes on grammar. I will also conduct a few classes on pedagogy of teaching English and TET, CTET and some more classes on JLDL and I will go for a number of analysis of a number of question papers in future. Okay. And uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel and listen to all of them from uh, maybe from August 1st onwards. I'm planning to conduct uh, online classes, free online classes for grammar grammar for all competitive examinations very shortly so we'll we are actually here uh, we have actually started the concept called prosody in relation to prosody prosody which is very important for nta english examination our focus is on friends believe me i am planning to take up these classes till 31st december 31st december till the end of this academic year till the end of this 2021 i am going to conduct nearly 200 classes live classes for nta examination to the students who are seriously preparing for this nta ugc net examination or set examination jldl english literature examinations my friends so stay tuned to our youtube channel venkan english guru so that uh, i'll i'll get a lot of uh, uh, motivation so that i can teach you a lot okay and uh, you possible try to inform your friends to subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, so that they'll get a lot of ideas. I'm planning to share all my experiences in terms of Engli English literature. And I'm going to share all my experiences for the past uh, that I acquired for the past in 16 or 17 years in the process of training uh, students to qualify this net set and JLDL and other competitive examinations. So I'm going to give you all, I'm going to share all my experiences and clarify your doubts. And I want to be a contributor in your development, in your success in future. Okay. And stay tuned to us. And first thing is subscribe to our YouTube channel. Those who have been watching our channel, try to subscribe so that, and we'll move further. And even I'll have some kind of, uh, a motivation, interest, a kind of anxiety, and I'll be taking a number of classes for you guys. Okay, so as and uh, let us start our discussion. Before that, let me ask few questions. Who is the author of Poetics? Come on, direct answer, immediate, quick answer. Who is the author of uh, Poetics? Yes, immediately respond. I need response from you guys. Who is the author of Poetics? Aristotle, wonderful. The Institutes of Oratory was written by. 
the institutes of oratory was written by the institutes of oratory was written by yes i need immediate response from you the institutes of oratory was written by wonderful rashekar wonderful prasad babu yes roman pintilian wonderful who classified who classified a figurative language into figures of thought and figures of speeches i repeat the question who classified figurative language into figures of thought and figures of speeches yes immediate response yes i need response from you i need response who classified figurative language into figures of thought and figures of speeches yes roman quintilian wonderful mahesh wonderful wonderful yes and because see based on these figurative expressions figures of thought are also called figures of thought are also called yes i need immediate response from you figures of thoughts are also called yes figures of thoughts are also called no yes i need immediate response my friends so tropes wonderful present babu wonderful tropes what is the meaning of tropes ugc net bit my friends what is the meaning of tropes i need immediate response from you what is the meaning of tropes yes immediate response turns wonderful wonderful soumya madam wonderful turns are conversions turns are conversions the following refers to figurative language which usually gives a lot of importance to meaning of the words meaning of the phrases meaning of the structures to understand literally meaning i repeat the bit the following refers to figurative expressions figurative language which foc which always focuses on the meaning of the words meaning of the phrases meaning of the sentences to understand the literal meaning or message of the poet these are called figures of thought or figures of speech response from you response from you figures of thought wonderful devi madam wonderful yes figures of speeches are also called 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 rhetorical figures wonderful shailaja madam wonderful yes yes and we'll stop our recapitulation and we'll go into our topic yes and i now i understood that everybody is watching the class carefully and we'll go to the class and immediately see today my friends we are going to close the topic figurative expressions yesterday we discussed 50% of the class those who have not listened to the class and watch part 1 of figures of speech so figurative language so that you will get some idea before we talk about because i am not going to uh, cover the first part because we already covered see my friends we started figurative figurative language figurative language refers to an important departure from the stand i am recapitulating in couple of minutes figure figurative language refers to a conspicuous departure from the standard meaning of the words or the order of the words in order to achieve some specific meaning or effect from the reader or the listener and this figurative language provides an opportunity to understand what is the literal meaning of the speak of the speaker or the poet what is the tone what is the mood what is the intention what is the unset message of the writer you will you can understand based on two things by understanding the meanings meanings of the words or phrases or sentences or by recognizing understanding the arrangement of words arrangement of phrases arrangement of sentences my friends and this spirit of language was first discussed by aristotle in the book poetics and the first person who classified this spirit of language into two figures of thought and figures of speeches roman quintilian in the book the institutes of oratory and he classified figurative language into figures of thought and uh, speeches thought are also called tropes speeches are also called rhetorical figures or schemes and what are the best example i gave you and uh, we had a little bit dic- discussion and shakespeare in his poetry in his uh, plays employed a number of uh, figures of thoughts like pun irony paradoxes in his poetry in his plays and alexander pope a wonderful master and uh, who used a number of figures of speeches like uh, and chiasmus zugma two important techniques that were popularly used by alexander pope and you can see my friends we have started figures of 
thought and mostly we covered and we are at we need to talk from paradox but let me recapitulate something for you next simile we had a discussion an explicit comparison an explicit comparison an extrinsic comparison between two distinctly different things we commonly use like as 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 and you can find out and and we had some examples next metaphor which is also called conceit popularly used by metaphysical poets my friends very very important with regard to net examination who employed a metaphor conceit epic similes in poetry metaphysical poets who are the popular metaphysical poets you need to know next next we don't use like as 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 in me and metaphor you know next and this metaphor which is also called an explicit metaphor implicit metaphor dead metaphor you also have these three but with regard to net examination there was no bit given hence i am not going to talk about metaphors can be implicit explicit dead metaphor but not required next you can see metonymy and this is very important you you can look at an object that is closely connected with for example a pen in the hands of the pen the moment you look at the pen or a piece of chalk you remember the teacher that kind of association with uh, uh, metonymy and the popular example given as part of ugc net set examination is pen is mightier than the sword very wonderful exam example next my friends you can see personification very important with regard to john ruskin john ruskin was the writer and victorian essayist who introduced the poet this poetic technique into literature so personification which is also called pathetic fallacy or transferred epithet we can also say prosopopia there are four names that are associated with this what are you going to do you are attributing endowing human sensations to non living things for example i can say my camera is crying because as there are no students like that kind of expressions next i gave you a few examples next you you can learn the definition of these circumlocution and tautology are paraphrases very very important next apostrophe apostrophe this is one of the poetic techniques used it refers to direct or indirect address to an absent person most of the words that you are going to read that you are going to read as part of meta as part of romantic poetry include a lot of apostrophe and personifications rhetorical questions these are the three figurative expressions that are commonly used in the poems like ode what are odes we'll talk about in the future next you can see my friends next euphemism very very important recently i found one one of the examples in the nt examination with regard to euphemism so talking something which is not agreeable in an agreeable manner which you can say you can find out we had a discussion with regard to this next hyperbole very very important my friends hyperbole understatement light words based on these three you will get one if you write net or set examination my friends what is hyperbole exaggeration of a fact opposite understatement a special form of understatement light words in light words we commonly use no not and understatement deliberately decreasing the importance of a person or something and hyperbole and deliberately increasing the importance of something or somebody you can find out and uh, understatement like uh, light words we had a discussion next oxymoron very what is this paradox yes we are here to talk about so from this onwards we are going to have a discussion friends if you get any doubt if you get any doubt you can chat and you can write down your doubts i i am going to read and i also gave you my phone number and uh, whatsapp number you can also whatsapp me to clarify your doubts and that's it so paradox very very important several times more than dozen times this bit was asked who coined the word paradox who coined the word paradox see remember in the history of ug senate examination who coined the word paradox that was asked in the paradox is an important poetic technique in new criticism paradox is an important technique in dash poetry metaphysical poetry my friends very very important who coined the word paradox clean the brooks in which book the study of poetry the study of poetry which becomes a part of uh, new criticism what is new criticism and that is related to unit and 9
and the theories critical theories we'll talk about i'll give you i'll talk a lot of issues don't worry about it and i'll make a number of connections and i'll be very very useful to you with regard to your examination it is not required to read watch the class is carefully you will have proper foundation see what is paradox paradox refers to a figure of thought which refers to a self contradictory statement this is self contradictory statement but has a valid meaning the statement is considered to be self contradictory the statement itself appears as if it is opposite in nature but this statement includes a valid meaning that kind of expressions in literature you know literature change is the only permanent thing in the world people say pain is the beginning of and pleasure in the world pain is the beginning of your success you today you you have a lot of problems you don't have job you are not able to qualify net or set and you don't have any recognition in the society this is pain which is going to take you and if you work hard if you toil hard which is going to take you to the top position so this statement appears as if it is self contradictory but this statement includes a wonderful valid meaning that kind of expressions in literature we can see in poetry paradoxes this was coined by clean the brook in the in the book the study of poetry most of the techniques that are uh, introduced by clean the brooks that i follow in my uh, in the process of reading poetry that is what most of my students are able to be successful in different examinations the kind of analysis that i do and i'll take him one of the models next see and this is popular poetic technique device used in metaphysical poetry who employed this type of uh, uh, this figurative expressions metaphysical poets and mainly neo criticism neo criticism one of the popular critical movements which became popular during 1940s metaphysical poetry you know metaphysical poetry this became so popular during renaissance metaphysical poetry once you think of i'll give you one small code to understand metaphysical poetry f o s what does it mean by f o s figures of speech from my point of view not figures of speech from my point of view metaphysical poetry what are the characteristics of metaphysical poetry for example if you ask me i'll give you a code f o s f refers to all the metaphysical why do you consider some some of the writers as metaphysical poets why do you consider the poetry written by the written by them as metaphysical poetry what how do you say that i can say based on three according to dr johnson these are the poets who use same figurative language the metaphysical poets always use same figures of speech either they use simile metaphor conceit conceit is the major important figurative expressions that they used can see it very very important my friends can see it is nothing but comparison can be simile can be metaphor explicit or implicit next all the metaphysical poets use same figurative language one second organization they follow same style of organization in terms of writing poetry when they are composing poetry they follow same kind of organization which means they follow same stanzas same rhyme scheme and same aspects next organization and yes yes refers to same subject metaphysical poets they composed poetry or based on only one particular subject they follow only one particular subject in in subjectual theme in terms of writing poetry they composed either social or religious poetry so this subject can be religious or social subjects that's it and who coined metaphysical who coined meta metaphysics was coined by john dryden in discourse concerning satire metaphysical dr johnson metaphysical poets t s eliot in 1921 enough we are away from the subject okay forget about it so paradox is popularly used by metaphysical poets and neo critics example i have written one small sentence fair is foul and foul is fair fair is foul pain is pleasure for example somebody says pain is the beginning of your success somebody says the statement appears how come pain becomes beginning of success so the statement itself has contradictory self contradictory but it has valid meaning 
Next, the child is the father of man. Very, very wonderful example. This bit was asked in the history of UGC net examination. This was the previous bit. Adversity brings real prosperity. How come adversity, difficulty brings real prosperity? That's what. Next, and poverty brings plenty. These are a few examples. Next, my friends. Next, we'll be talking about irony. Another important uh, figurative expression. Another important figure of thought. Irony. It refers to a figure of thought in which false and fibles, in which false and fibles, false and fibles of a person or thing are exposed through humor. Okay. And uh, the problems of a society, problems of a person, problems in a particular ism, particular movement, particular theory, they're exposed through humor, through comedy. Next, this iron, ironical expressions, these are used in satires and maybe sentimental, anti-sentimental kind of literature or poetry. Sarcasm, to create some kind of sarcasm of a person, of a thing, of a concept. Next, criticism. Next, again, this is another important very, very important one. Several times this bit was asked. Who coined the word? Coined. Remember my friends. Coined. Means first used. Very, very important. Who first used? Instead of saying that, we can say, who coined the word irony? Again, what? Who? Cleanth Brooks. In the book, The Study of Poetry. Next, popular poetic device used in metaphysical poetry and neocriticism very very important this is example the girl is beautiful which means not intelligent the girl is beautiful but i cannot marry which means you can understand and underlying meaning the paper is so easy not to write the paper is so easy underlying meaning not to write the exam next the man is so colorful which means colorless people say and exactly you can find opposite and meaning. Those kinds of expressions, my friends, when they are written, you cannot understand. You need to understand the context in which they are said. And those statements are made. Once you understand, then only you will be able to understand whether it is an ordinary or ironical statement. So remember only one thing. You coined the word uh, irony, clear the Brooks. In which poetry, in which critical theory, the literary device irony is used. Next, new criticism, metaphysical poetry. Next, my friends, you can see pun. Very, very important. Very, very important. In figurative expressions, all the words are taken from Greek, except the word pun. The pun is taken from Italian. I think, did I give that? The word, yes. It is derived from an Italian word. Remember, this was also asked in the history of English literature, NT examination. And sonnet is taken from Italian. And uh, you, you can take the word pun is taken from Italian. Like that you can identify most of the figures of thoughts, most of the figure, figures of speech, the words. These words are borrowed from Greek and Greek or Latin. And but the pun is taken from Italian. So it is derived from Italian word, which means a fine point. Liter literal meaning. It refers to play upon words. What is Pun, pun refers to play upon words. You use words to have plenty of meanings. One word gives plenty of meanings. Next, words express different meaning based on the context in which they are used. You are able to, you use words to provide different meanings according to the context. Next, and popularly used by Shakespeare, John Dunn, Oscar Wilde. Dunn, for example, you can see Dunn. Same pronunciation. You can also use the word Dunn has done many things in this world. Done, has done many things in this world, which means first done, name of a person, second done, and past participle of V3, like that. Next, you can see homophones, homonyms. These all homophones, homonyms come under pun. And it is also called paranamosia. Very, very important. Paranamosia, this is another phrase that can be associated with the what pun. A special form of pun is called equivoc. So pun, paranamosia, equivoc are can be used synonymously. Shakespeare used a lot of puns in his plays. We can find a lot of puns, for example, the importance of being earnest. Earnest, and that is that has different meaning. And uh, Oscar Wilde or John Dunn, Shakespeare, who used a lot of puns. I gave you a few examples you can observe. 
we bank on the state bank of india always first bank it's a play first bank depend rely second bank it's a place where you can keep your money he is too much of a bear to bear sorry you can find out the meaning meanings here men a bear bear you can find out there are plenty of meanings like that next he kept his spirits up by pouring spirits down and the meaning of the spirits and the meaning meaning of the spirit okay so like this which you can see and other aspects he kept his spirits up his confidence by pouring spirits down spirits and the uh, you can say the spirits and he was able to control and you can see i saw isa i saw isa that i never saw first sa second sa and the past form of c and the this sa an instrument to cut something next an ambassador is a person who lies abroad who lies abroad for the sake of his country you can see and the meaning of lies next i went and told saxton saxton told 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 the meaning is different told informed told surprised like that so use of words to convey different meaning these kinds of expressions my friends which we can say and which come under the figurative expression pun next you can see now we are going to talk about a few figures of speeches next next we are talking about uh, alliteration or uh, consonants what is alliteration not required and these are not uh, mainly required and we will talk about not even a single word that was given as part of net or set examination my friends but at the school level you will get bits at the school level kind of examination alliteration which refers to repetition of two or more consonantal speech sounds two or more consonantal speech sounds and the term is usually applied to only consonants you know speech sounds speech sounds are categorized into two types there are 26 letters in english language these are pronounced into 44 speech sounds out of this 44 20 are vowels and 24 are consonantal speech sounds okay what are vowels what are consonantal sounds that that you are aware i feel like so repetition of two or more three or more consonantal speech sounds alliteration which is also called as and consonants is the repetition of a sequence of two or more consonants and the change in the for example you can see leave love lean alone pita pata and ho oh, where are you going said reader to rider sing a song of sixpence sing song six a repetition of three or more consonantal sounds a reeling road a reeling road rolling road rambles round the repetition of the sound ra like consonants consonants ka constantly ka cause ka confusion ka like that fa 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 so repetition of three or more consonantal sounds you simply focus only on arrangement of sounds syllables words phrases that's it you are not going to give priority to meaning those are considered to be figures of speeches next my friends you can see uh, this is assonance assonance is nothing but repetition of three or more a repetition of identical similar vowel sounds three or more vowel sounds you can see those still unravished bride i quai i and chai i sai i and tai so repetition of three or more vowel sounds is nothing but assonance at least you need to know the definitions enough next you can see my friends synecdoche once you read the poetry of uh, uh, robert frost you find plenty of uh, synecdoches robert frost stopping by woods on a snowy evening or and the last night together or else you can read the poem the road not taken you find plenty of synecdoches next what is synecdoche in greek taking together next a part of something is used to signify the whole the whole is to signify the part a part for of something is used to signify the whole and the whole is used to signify the part you only refer to the part which talks about the whole you refer to the whole which talks about the part i need two heads which means two people and oh, oh god oh jesus give us the daily bread bread means are you going to eat only bread every day no bread refers to food like that 
the term I am using the part to talk about the whole. Oh God, give us and give us a shelter to live. Shelter means are you going to live lead your life in a shelter? No, a, a house to lead your life happily with your kids, with your family, like that. So you can say ten hands, which means ten workers. Ten hands, ten workers. I can say ten hands. I need ten hands to finish this work, which means ten people. Okay, all the eyes are looking at me, which means not eyes, all the people. Nearly 60 students, nearly six, nearly 120 eyes are watching at me, which means nearly 60 students are watching this, like that. Next, 100 sales, which means ships. Next, teaching is my bread and butter. Bread and butter is nothing but profession. Next, you can say, oh God, give us a daily bread, means food. He has many mouths, many people, many kids many family members next give us this day our daily bread all hands to the pump all women all people good people of all sort lend me please can you lend me your ear which means are you going to remove your ear and give it to me no means listen to me oh and oh guys come on lend me your lend me your ears which means listen to me like that you blind mouths the correct corrupted men these kinds of expressions which you can say, my friends, synecdoche. Okay. Couple of times that bit was, uh, uh, there were bits based on synecdoches in the history of UGC net, NTA. Next, a rhetorical question, not mm, more required, but this is very important to understand. This plays an important role to understand the theme of the poem, but directly you don't get bits based on rhetorical question. It refers to an ordinary question. A rhetorical question refers to it's an ordinary question used in the beginning or at the end or in the middle to get a response not to get response we are we are not going to get response this question is given for example oh god oh god how do i love thee for example somebody says oh god and uh, you can see i for example somebody says and uh, pb shelley says if winter comes can spring be far behind here, P.B. Shelley does not expect any response from somebody. He is actually using the statement only to attract the audience. Most of the public speakers, most of the public speakers, are orators, they use questions before they begin their lectures. Next, it's a statement in the form of grammatical question used in words. It is asked in order to request, not to request information or to invite a reply, no only to achieve greater expressive force than direct assertion. This is commonly used in odes. If the poem is an example for ode like uh, Ode to the West Wing, Ode to Autumn, Ode to Nightingale, Ode to Skylark, if you read these poems, lengthy poems, you find a number of rhetorical questions. Next, and uh, uh, one of the examples that is used by Alexander Pope, you can observe. Next, you can see my friends and some of the examples I gave you see. How do I love the Elizabeth Barrett Browning? She composed sonnets from Portuguese and these are love songs and that are addressed to Robert Browning. She begins, how do I love thee? Let me count the ways. I love thee with my smile. Like she goes on saying, so a rhetorical question. She does not expect a response from Robert Browning, but she wanted to attract the attention of uh, Robert Browning and she uses Oh, West Wind, if winter comes, can spring be far behind? Here, P.B. Shirley used this in the poem, Water the West Wind, to attract the audience, not to get any response. Or, will the dreamer wake? It's a kind of, Shelley's Water the West Wind, you see. And I fall upon the thorns of life, I bleed, oh, West Wind, lift me as a wave as a cloud. How can we know the reader from the, the dancer from the dance? These are a few questions. You can see the question mark at the end. So any question that is used in the form of poetry, which is called a rhetorical question. These are not used to take responses, only to attract the audience, to attract the reader. That's it. Next, you can see my friends, oxymoron. Yes, couple of bits were there. Still, once you look at 2019 or 20, you find a couple of bits based on oxymoron antithesis. You will get. And oxymoron is a special form of antithesis. In it, too contradictory, contradictory. Listen to me, my friends. Some of the students, they are not able to qualify net examination because they don't 
they are not able to understand the technical terms. That's what I suggest you, suggest everybody, buy the book Glossary of Literary Terms by M.H. Abrams. Buy the book, read like a Bible. Read like a Bible, read like a Quran, read like the Gita. And read all the terms. Then only it is possible to understand every word that is given in the examination. You can you can talk to students. Some of I, I usually speak to a lot of a lot a lot about lot to my students after the right exam. Whether they were able to read and understand even fifty percent of the questions, no. Which means they are not able to identify the meanings of few technical terms. That's what my friends read the book. Glossary of literary terms, which is very useful. First, put a question to yourself. Have you read at least six times, at least five times, the book Handbook of Literary Terms or Glossary of Literary Terms, written by M. H. Abrams? Very, very important. If you are really interested to qualify, net set. So, oxymoron. It's a special form of antithesis, contradictory, which means opposite. There was a definite. This definition was given in the history of UGC NET examination. The process of using two contradictory words in a sentence refers to dash figures of speech oxymoron. See, and the qualities are predicted at one of the ones of the same thing. For example, see, she accepted it as the kind of reality. What is the opposite of kind of reality? And he is a cheerful pessimist. A pessimist cannot be cheerful. Cheerful cannot be pessimist. Opposite. An unwilling volunteer. A volunteer cannot be unwilling. Unwilling cannot be a volunteer. Love is a sweet poison. Poison cannot be sweet. Sweet cannot be poison. A positive pessimist. You can see murderous innocence. Popular bit given in the history of UGC net. Next, pleasing pains. Open secret. Secret cannot be open. An unsocial socialist. A popular novel written by J. B. Shaw. Unsocial socialist. How can somebody, an unsocial, becomes a socialist? So, using two opposite words together without any gap is nothing but oxymoron. Next, you can see my friends antithesis. Using two opposite words together oxymoron. Using two opposite words in different phrases in different classes, which you can say antithesis. Two words, two words which are opposite in meaning. Are put together in the same sentence. We use two opposite words in two different phrases, in two different classes. For example, see, this is used in mock epics, used in satirical, ironical poetry, my friends. Swami Vivekananda is simple in dress and great in great another, okay, in action. Patience, pain, doctor's pleasure, pain, pleasure. Man proposes one which is opposite. God disposes, proposes, disposes. Shelley's wedding is Vijay's funeral. Wedding, funeral. Next, to her is human. To forgive is divine. Popular example given by Alexander Pope. This repeated several times. To her is human. To forgive is divine. To err, to forgive. Remember. Next, marriage has many pains, but celibacy has no pleasure. Pain, pleasure. So, see. Using two contradictory words side by side is nothing but oxymoron. Using two opposite words in two different phrases in two different classes, which you can say, my friends, antithesis. Next, you can say, my friends, climax not required. Only just uh, definition is required. Climax, anticlimax, increasing the importance of a person. In a process of increasing the importance of a person or a thing from lower to higher. What do you do? You go on. You go on increasing the importance of a person lower to higher is nothing but climax, anticlimax from higher to lower. Next, it refers to arrangement of words in the order of increasing importance. The moment you go on adding one word, the importance of somebody or someone or something increases. Okay. For example, I used a word, and she is simple and. Uh, her importance increased. I used another word, sincere, increased. Stylistic, sophisticated, lady. So, the order, you use different words to increase the importance. Getting a job is an easy, simple and painless act. You go on using. Next, anticlimax, which is entirely opposite, exactly opposite to climax. And what is this? You decrease the opposite of climax. 
that refers to sudden descent from decreasing the importance of a person from higher to lower. You decrease the importance of a person from higher to lower. It is chiefly used for purposes of satire or ridicule. In order to ridicule someone, we use this. And you can see, he is clumsy, dirty, covered, good for nothing, cheat, scoundrel. You go on adding. The moment you add one word, the importance of the person goes on decreasing. This style of using anticlimax, never these, these were asked in the history of UGC net examination, my friends. Climax and not anticlimax, but you need to know something. Next, you can see, my friends, equism. Yes, equism, onomatopoeia. Onomatopoeia, you, you see, it refers to a figure of speech in which the sound denotes the thing. The moment you think about the sound, his, you remember snake. Buzz, you remember fly. And bow bow, you remember dog. Meow, you remember the cat. Tick, 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 clock. Click, camera, like that. So the sound indirectly reflects the thing or the object. And this is also called egoism, used in children rhymes a lot. Once you read children, children poems, lyrics, you find a lot of onomatopoeias. Next, you can see my friends, next to Paranomaria, not required. This is very useful to make your language and creative, but no bit was asked in the history of UGC net set. This was not at all asked. You see, it refers to sentences. It refers to sentences that consist of rhyming words. These include a number of rhyming words. It is done for rhythm in poetry to create rhythm. And poets use, writers use this Parnamosia, Parnamaria. For example, you see, Indians are always in a hurry. They marry, they carry, and they worry. See, only to rhythm. Indians are always in a hurry. They marry, they carry, they hurry. Next, you can see there is a tension at the junction where a function after the election he is held as a celebration. Once you observe the language of our vice president and Venka and I do, whether his first language or second language or English, and he uses a lot of rhythm, he uses a lot of this kind of language if you really observe his language. Next, Another important concept is anaphora. Anaphora, if the sentences into series begin with the same word, if the sentences and into series begin with the same word or same phrase or same sentence is called anaphora. For example, once you observe the poem, where the mind is without fear, where the mind is without fear, where knowledge is free, where the world has not been broken up into fragments. So the poem goes on and uh, Using the poet you uses the poem with the same word where where where. For example, once you observe the speech given by Martin Luther King, and he, he begins and his speech with five statements begin with the same. I have a I have a dream. I have a dream. I have a dream. So every verse line begins with the, I have a dream. Five lines. Next, let freedom bring. Let freedom bring. These types of expressions, my friend, anaphora. These are popularly used by political leaders and preachers, orators, public speakers, my friends. And it is done for emphasizing repetition, to reinforce the meaning, to attract the audience. Who uses this? Most of the political leaders, they use a lot of anaphora. Next, you can see another important concept is example. For an Indian, everything is secret. Parents are secret, teachers are secret, home is secret. So every time we are using secret, secret, secret. Next, money makes many things. Money takes life. So this poem begins with the word money, 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 money. Like that. Next, uh, very important uh, aspects are these. These are very important. Chiasmus, Zugma. Very, very important these two are. Because... Once we observe, the, most of the students, they make mistakes in these two. So that's what focus on chiasmus and uh, chiasmus and zugma. These are the two things that I want to talk about. Focus on these two. Yeah, chiasmus. What is chiasmus? What is chiasmus? For example, once you observe. What is chiasmus? It's a Greek term for the word letter X. So it can be indicated with the word cross. Next, 
cross over literal meaning next it what is chiasmus it is a sequence of two phrases or clauses which are parallel in syntax but reverse the order of the corresponding words it says what is chiasmus sequence of two phrases or clauses which are parallel in syntax syntax once you observe the structure they are parallel and but reverse the order of the corresponding words when you reverse you will get exactly opposite which means the syntax if the syntax is like a b and uh, when you reverse it is going to be b a like this like this next so in this line from pope the verb first precedes then follows work without the show and without pomp presides see works without a show without a pomp presides so the poet had deliberately used for example you can say a this is b and b and this is a like that next fair is foul and foul is fair fair is foul a b foul is fair b a so you need you are not going to focus on the meaning of the sentence you you only focus on the focus on the structure syntactical pattern when you reverse it you need to get exactly opposite for example there is a poem called uh, tiger there, there there are two important water water everywhere one line not a drop to drink so water water everywhere when you read the second one not a drop to drink exactly opposite to the what is said at the beginning like that you can see you have seen the popular example these are the popular examples given in the history of uges uges net you have seen how a man was made a slave structure observe the structure you have seen how a man was made a slave you shall see how a slave will be made a man so ab became ba only you, you are not there to focus on the meaning already we focus we discussed in figurative expressions in figures of figures of speeches we need to focus only on the syntactical pattern arrangement of sounds words phrases sentences we should not go into the meaning okay our focus is always on understanding the letters syllables sounds words and their orders or, and their arrangements next like that for example you can see a popular definition given by shelley about poetry poetry is the record of the best and happiest moments of the happiest and best minds which means there are no happiest and best minds like that and you can find out very very important my friends most of the students they get confused with regard to chiasmus simply you can see the order is going to be the first phrase you, you will get the exactly opposite in the second phrase second class next jugma very very important my friends jugma and chiasmus and jugma were popularly used by alexander pope my friends as i told you jugma it refers to a process of attributing it refers to a process of attributing a word attributing a word to two or more parts of the sentence one word can be associated with uh, two or more for example i can say okay nehru developed india he developed our economy for example for example i have written to nehru developed india nehru developed our economy i can say in one sentence nehru developed india and our economy so here which means here this developed can be associated with india can be associated with our economy that's it only you need to give priority to the structure only structure my friends remember so the ideas the ideas sorry idea not ideas idea is easy and comprehensible so the idea is easy this idea can be associated with easy the idea is comprehensible so one word can be associated with two or more words shailaja destroyed destroyed my love and my life so one word destroyed can be she, and portia took away my wealth and my life 
that there is a popular dialogue in Merchant of Venice. Portia or the ship took away my life and my wealth, which means destroyed not only my life, but also my wealth, my name like that. So here destroyed can be associated with my love and life. These kinds of expressions, my friends, you can say Zugma. Okay. Next, I'm talking, I'm giving you a few examples and very important net oriented only net. Okay. And the bits you can see. And before that, you can uh, you can uh, uh, post your comments and doubts through live chat so that I can answer your doubts. Yeah, apostrophe definition seems to be same, sir. Not to get a response. Apostrophe example. And then goblet and how do I love the? Yeah, apostrophe rhetorical question. Yes, do you require any rhetorical question? Refers to only question, but apostrophe. It's a direct or indirect. In Ethan Goblet, the speaker looks at the bottle. Uh, you can see Dispoman, yes, they look at the bottle and they speak. Oh, my sweet bottle. And who prepared you? And I'm going to drink you. I'm going to enjoy you. So this e, this can be, this. when you think of the address, apostrophe. When you think of the question, only structure, rhetorical question, remember. So some of the examples I'm talking about, common expressions such as falling in love, racking our brains, hitting a sales target, Climbing the ladder of success are examples of hyperbole. These are in the form of exaggeration. Falling in love, nobody falls. Tropes in figurative language refers to. Tropes in figurative language. So this is, all these are hyperboles. Tropes in figurative language refer to what? Turns or conversions. United we stand. Remember my friends, united we stand, divided we fall. Wonderful example. Several times this bit featured in the history of UGC net set united opposite divided stand opposite fall so two opposite classes are used in one sentence hence it's an example for antithesis remember next next uh, you can also see the following is an example of water water everywhere not a drop to drink best example for chiasmus Okay, here the answer is chiasmus. Opposite, water, water everywhere, which is exactly not a drop to drink. Had we but world enough and time, this coinous lady were no crime. See, this coinous lady, the shy lady were no crime. We are the, the speaker deliberately talking about, deliberately next is, this is a form of euphemism. Describing something, a disagreeable thing in an agreeable manner. Hence, it's an example for euphemism. Okay, next. Next, you can see, my friends, the following sentences are examples for his boat and his dreams sank. Wonderful. Latest examples with regard to Jigma. His boat and his dreams sank. This sank can be attributed to his dreams, can be attributed, his boat sank, his dreams sank. See, and his heart and his love fled away. His heart and his love fled away. This fled away can be his love fled away and his heart fled away too. So best example for Zugma. See, my friends, the phrase darkness visible. Visible cannot be darkness. Darkness cannot be visible. So darkness is the opposite of visible. Visible is the opposite of darkness. Using two contradictory words together, you can say oxymoron. I don't call him a villain because it would be unparliamentary to do so. I don't call him a villain because it would be unparliamentarily to do so. Best example for again euphemism. Talking something which is which is not acceptable in an acceptable manner. Euphemism. You can see my friends. So this is what the discussion and uh, apart from I will also give you two definitions. Inversion, invocation. Remember these two. These are also related to figurative expressions. Invocation, you know, it's a speech. It's a prayer that is used by the poet before he composes the poem. The best example is any greatest poem, any epic begins with an invocation. So invocation refers to a speech that is uh, th that is used by 
by the poet before he writes before he composes the greatest poem the heroic poem epics example the before the paddle lost there is an invocation like that next inversion for example i love radha there is a statement i love radha you can say this radha i love so change in word order which is nothing but inversion inversion change in word order is nothing but inversion remember my friends these are also asked in the stf ugc net examination what is inversion change in word